I don my gay apparel. Amen. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Clayton. Thank you. Uh, you don't look like you're a day over 27. Oh, he's more like Peter Pan. Yeah, yeah. He's down there in Everland. I never could find it. <laughs> well, you know, um, the Lord has been talking to me there this week, and I've been talking in... Um, a lot on Facebook about certain things and one of the things that he was leading me along the way of was about Apostle Paul um, a lot of us you know I don't know about you but there was a time when I was younger and I was going to church and I just got so fed up with ministers I was thinking that ministers were trying to make Apostle Paul into God and I, I, to this day, I still believe some of them were. But Apostle Paul was not God. And don't ever once in your life ever think that you are God or that you can be greater than God or you, you can outsmart God because we just can't do it. And there was one that thought he could, and he's in a whole heap of trouble right now. We know who he is, Lucifer, the archangel that fell from heaven. But, um, and then I want to also talk, not just on Paul, but also over in the Old Testament about Job. Because there's something about those two guys that I really want to bring out to us. Because I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is, is to show what the true church is and where, where the true church stands. And where the church today is standing as well. And that is that uh, the Apostle Paul, you know, uh, we, we hear a lot about him. Well, this, this guy, Paul, he wasn't, he wasn't discipled all that much in reality. He, he, he came up through the school of hard knocks. And um, he, he learned a lot. And um, when you look back on his life, he, he was really a man that went out and persecuted the Christians. He, he really persecuted them and, and would turn them in and, and haul their butts into jail and, and everything else and, and stuff like this and, and help tax them and run them out of their house and, and stuff. He was not such a pleasurable gentleman. But when, when he came along on the road to Damascus, Something changed his mind. And that something is the power of God, is the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to tell you, um, because my wife and I have been reading, we, we read through the Bible a couple times a year, and um, we just finished up reading the letters of Paul. Paul wrote a lot to the church. How many of you know that also Paul wrote over half the New Testament? Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Well, he wrote in these letters to the churches, and um, in these letters to the churches, it, it really tells a lot about Paul. And it tells a lot about where we are today. Okay, number one, you know, Paul was shipwrecked and was bitten by a, a viper. And the people that was aboard the ship with him was thinking that he, he, you know, he should be dead because it was a very venomous, poisonous viper. God spared his life. Keep that in mind. The other thing I want you to know is that Paul was whipped several times, many times, whipped until the inch of his life. And he was stoned. He wasn't the kind of stone that Bob Dylan sang about back in the 60s. He was stoned with rocks, big rocks. And many bones were broken, bruised up, and, and really bludgeoned. Paul was cast into the dungeon and into the prisons. And he was starved. But every time when those things happened, 
as you read through the letters of Paul, you'll find out. It's something that a lot of Christians don't do today, and the church is scared to death of today. And that is standing up for righteousness' sake. See, when Paul, when the Holy Spirit came to Paul, and, and Paul seen the glory of God, and he found out and figured out who Jesus Christ really is, the Christ child. It changed his whole life. He never was the same man from then on. Paul completely had a conversion. We, we have a lot of people that say that they have converted and that they've changed their ways. And that they have accepted Christ into their life. But I want us to think about one thing. And that is that Paul, through all of his wrongs, he always had a forgiving heart. And, and he even came to the point where he had to forgive some of his disciples that went around and preached with him and brought the word. And we'll, you'll see that in, in his letters that he written. But Paul was not afraid what I would say call a spade a spade. He, he was not afraid to stand up and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He was not afraid to speak the truth and stand for it at irregardless of what the price may be. If it was to lay his life down or be cast into prison or be whipped to death. He was a man, a man of integrity, a man that knew where he stood with his God and his Savior. He knew where he stood. And he knew the price that was paid and the price that he would have to pay to have that eternal life in heaven. Now as we look over into the book of Job, and Job probably was the first book that was written down and yes I know a lot of people say well Genesis is the first book of the Bible well that's true but Job was probably the first book that was written down by Moses Job was a righteous man he did not have the same background that the apostle Paul had Job was a righteous, upright man of integrity from the get-go. He loved the Lord. He loved Jehovah. He wasn't afraid to admit it. But one day, Satan came and talked <coughs> with God. God told Satan that, Satan, you can do anything you want with Job, but I know Job's heart. I know his heart wouldn't turn against me. He said, there's one thing you cannot do, and that is take his life. I will not permit you to take his life. Now, in that short story of Job, is a powerful story. And I want you to know that I've read that story every day, sometimes four and five times a day, when I was going through a deep depression. So deep that I was a walking zombie. I was a walking dead person myself. And I felt God's face turn away from me. I felt so unworthy. And I remember crying out to my wife. And I remember actually saying to her, mumbling, why did God forsake me? How come he turned his face away from me? You know, because still in my heart, I wanted to love him. But I knew the wretched person that I am and that I was. But it was only because of Jesus Christ's blood that's changed me. 
the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you about Job. Satan did everything he could to break Job. Job was a very wealthy, well, probably the wealthiest man on the face of the earth at that time. He lost everything. All of his cattle, all of his land, he lost it all. His friends turned away from him and mocked him. Job stood fast. He still embraced God. He would not badmouth God. He would not complain about his Savior. Job stood righteous. Even his closest friends all left him. Even his wife turned on him and asked him, well, why don't you just forsake him? Just forsake God. Job wouldn't do it. No. He didn't. He had boils all over his body, bleeding sores, festive sores. He had, he had everything possible to make him sick and miserable and cranky. He lost everything. He lost his family, his kids, his home, down to nothing. But he stood fast. For the rest of the story, you can read, read Job. Job isn't that long of a book. God blessed him. I want the United States and the church of our nation, the people who think that they believe in God, to think about Paul, the apostle, that didn't have that much discipling, but he was one of the greatest disciples that had ever walked the face of the earth. He wrote over half of the New Testament. And at the same time, think about Job. And consider ourselves. Because I tell you one thing. Job and Paul had in common. They knew the only way into heaven was through God. Was through Jesus Christ. They knew that they were the ones that had to change or not to change. They knew that they had to make their choices. Even if it calls for us to go against <coughs> the law of the land, because God holds us to a higher standard. God holds us to a higher standard. It's not a denomination. It's not a religion. It's not a church thing that's going to get you into heaven. It's none of that. The only thing that's going to get you into heaven is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that Christ child. The only thing that's going to get you into heaven is the bread of life. Matthew 4, 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The word of God is the bread of life. It's the manna from heaven. Let's say the, the worst thing that ever could happen happens. No power, no electricity, no nothing. All the stores, you can't go to any of the stores because there's nothing in them. There's no way to get there. Your cars won't start. Nothing will happen. You, you can't do anything. How many really believe that God could rain manna? I'll tell you what. 
the children that came out of Egypt knew. Moses knew. They didn't starve. God that we serve doesn't ask us to go out and murder and kill people. He asks us to live, to love on them and to help them to find the eternal life in him. It's the word of God that's the only thing that's going to save us in our choices to serve him. I don't care how good you are. I don't care how righteous you think you are. If your lifestyle don't show it, you have nothing to give. You can go over and preach the gospel to your neighbor day in and day out. You can talk to them. But if you don't show it in your life, in your lifestyle, you have nothing. You're a lost cause. Jesus' word doesn't change. Man tries to change God's word. Thank you. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your living word. I thank you for your gift of eternal life. Let your light shine brightly in each and every one of us. I give you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.